Howdy, this is Lemmy and Nick with Dormant Products. Today we're talking wiring, specifically crimp versus solder. We're gonna discuss the merits of joining up wires and making repairs in a couple different ways. I have a feeling, knowing us, we're probably gonna sort of meander around with some other wire and stuff. But for the time being, we're trying to focus on terminal connections. We're gonna start, I think, with the crimping versus the soldering. Uh, we should probably let you know, to give you a fair warning. We're both pretty diehard crimp people. Let's start off with uh, downfalls of soldering. So when it comes to soldering, I think, I, I, boy, I, I could go on all day. So soldering, I think, is personally probably... Please don't go on all day. <laughs> probably one of the most difficult things to do consistently, especially in the field, right? It's one thing if you're building a harness on the bench, but it's another if you're sort of crammed into the front of a car, you know, working in the dash or something. That can get right. pretty ugly. Improper application of solder, right? We, you know, we've all seen a bad solder joint. Um, it takes a long time, it really does. Like if you gotta do 20 wires, holy moly, like it takes a while to heat up all them wires. You need four hands to do it correctly a lot of times. <laughs> One of the things I don't love about solder too is it is very, you know, very prone to vibration. You take a solder, right, and you've, you've effectively turned a section of our stranded wire solid. I mean, solid wire is used in homes because you're not, you know, you're not turning your steering wheel in your house, but you know, Stranded wire is designed to flex and move. As soon as you solder it, um, you lose that ability to flex. Uh, another thing about solder I don't love is oftentimes you're soldering in an area where it can either be dangerous or undesirable, right? Like I don't want to solder near a gas tank if I could get away with it. I don't want to solder in some expensive vehicle interior on a rare car. Like that's not something that makes me feel real good. Yeah, like hot solder dropping on the carpet. Yes. Yeah, honestly, I just hate soldering. I can't, I cannot stand soldering. You can't tell if a solder's been done correctly. And this one, we have not broken this. We actually left this just like it is for you folks to take a peek at. But this soldered connection I made, Nick says looks great. Nick actually paid me a rare compliment, so that looks really nice. And I'm telling you, that thing is ice, cold you know normally when you're when you're soldering correctly right you're going to heat both wires and that heat is going to draw the solder into the joint that's that's how it's done correctly the incorrect way that almost everybody winds up doing at some point in their lives is heating up the solder and then kind of like dribbling it into the wire which is like never works and you know another thing too is i feel like it's pretty easy to test a crimped item right you're just going to kind of tug on it a little bit Whereas I, I definitely think that like, if you're gonna solder, you're gonna try and make a mechanical bond with the wires anyway. So you might not feel the weakness of a solder. And as we've discussed before, the only real way to test it is to destroy the joint, which kind of destroys the point of it anyway. I mean, yeah, if you get a couple that are good, you, you have a high chance of doing a good job, but there isn't really a way to actually know. Uh, so soldering has its place. It's really not to join wires in, in, in a car for all the reasons that he explained. If you're soldering to a board, obviously, that's where, that's where it should be applied. For, for crimps, the only real downfall with crimps in the automotive industry is if it's improperly crimped, if it's uh, either crimped too hard or not crimped hard enough, or if it's crimped too close to the edge. If you crimp it too close to the edge, you, you risk um, damaging the actual strands where it could break at the crimp. Um, and that's really the only downfalls that I believe uh, for crimp connections. I feel like you're make, making me play devil's advocate here. You're sure, making me defend ahead. something I don't like. So a couple things I don't love about crimping. So um, to your point, re repeatability I think is is highly dependent upon the operator, right? If you're if you're good at crimping, yes, you're going to do and a wonderful. Tooling. Yep, exactly. You're going to do a wonderful job. If you're bad at it though, it's really really bad. I would argue that a bad solder will probably hang in there and be a little more usable than a bad crimp. A bad crimp just separates. That's right. just it. I think a lot of the pro solder folks would say, hey, those things can get kind of ugly. Um, I think especially if you're using, you know, the colored insulated stuff or if you got gobs of electrical tape or you're not being really neat with your work or you've got a giant bunch of butt connectors in one area. In one spot, yep. Those would be, those would be I, I think, some of the downfalls for, for, for crimp. But going back to solder, one, uh, one thing that I do, sometimes I'll do both, I'll crimp and solder. It's usually when I'm doing um, like a ground cable or something that's external to the vehicle that um, might be prone to some type of um, you know, corrosion, I'll always crimp it, I'll put some solder in there to fill all the gaps, heat shrink, and then it's usually a lifetime connection. Why don't you ever see solder joints in a factory wiring harness? 
they're not just wiring the entire car one day. Instead, they're grabbing all these sub assemblies that may be coming from different suppliers and such. So it's not even a it's not even realistic to expect that they would be able to do all the wiring in one rip. Yeah. So it's because of the longevity of the of the connection and not having any type of issues. And obviously, it's it's not something that can be done in the assembly line. And I think they also know too that we we got to get in there and fix this stuff every now and then. Yep. So they build and be serviceable. You know, you can you can always fix a busted harness, right? Think about if a think about like an OBD connector was all soldered. Like, <laughs> I don't think I would want to. I don't think I would want to deal with that. These things aren't very serviceable. Like if you solder it, it's pretty permanent. Like you you have to unsolder and resolder. It's really the only way you can go back to it. Just like in aviation and any type of transit industry, they don't solder wires. They're all joined with crimps, mainly because a crimp will not you know, loosen up and come apart if it's properly done. I'm actually kind of glad you mentioned um, aviation because that's that's always like my go-to. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Those are prohibited in most air, you know, airplane hangers. Um, most of the silly junk I work on, right? Like vibrating motorcycles, tractors, everything just shakes. Like it's all yep. shaking, like off-road equipment. It just shakes and shakes and shakes. Yep. And I don't know that I've had a vibration related solder failure of my own, but I've definitely gotten into older stuff um, where clearly something has cracked. Yeah. How about tips and tricks to make a wiring job look better? For me, it's a non-insulated terminal with heat shrink tubing. I will never use an insulated terminal. If you do, you completely throw appearance out the window. Uh, how about you? I got a few. I, I want to just for a second. I did want to, you know, you had, you had talked about the uh, the insulated connectors. Every now and then, I'll find them useful. For instance, if I have like one spade connector, a male and a female, I want to use somewhere. Right. I'm thinking specifically True. like I've I've had motorcycles where I wanted to run a headlight because they were street legal, but I was also going to race that same bike, so I might want to take the headlight off. So like right. that was that was a good application gotcha. for that for me. I have had to use heat shrink with insulated terminals. A lot of times, I will arrange things such that I can either sneak the heat shrink up underneath the insulation that already exists on the terminal, or if I can't do that, barring that, I'll, I'll, bring, the, I'll bring the heat shrink around the outside. That can help for stuff that's sort of a little more exposed to the elements, I yep. think. Um, this, this guy here, I'll do this quite a bit. Um, an old timer showed me this at some point, which is just taking your wire and wrapping it around a you know, a screwdriver shaft or something. But it's a nice way to provide a little bit of strain relief if you have, uh, you know, if you're using this stuff in an area where it's gonna move. It looks reasonably neat for what it is. It doesn't yeah. look absolutely awful. It also um, kind of acts as a service loop if you need to get after something in the future. You know, make sure you have your extra length so you can cut it to the exact size. Don't think you know the exact length. When you're doing a harness, you're always having to route in different areas. Um, always uh, account for the worst case scenario, and then you can always cut it down and make it smaller when you make your make your last at. That's a great point. You almost wind up using more wire if you try and skimp and save every last Absolutely. inch because you're always going to cut at least one of them too short yep. and have to rerun that section. Yeah. Adding service loops to harness you, harnesses you build, I try and leave things a little extra long uh, for this exact reason. If I do need to go back and repair something. You know, it especially helps when you can sort of tuck that back in. I mean, I even do that when I'm, if I'm wiring a house, right? Like you can leave yep. a little loop that the yep. drywall hides, but it'll make your life a lot easier if, oh, yeah. you know, if some, if some wire starts getting brittle. And this is going to be pro solder. Um, I, you've run into this too, where you've had to put wires through a hole or you, you know, you, can't, you don't want to bulk up a bundle. So to yep. some degree or another, if you're going to use something like a butt connector, you can stagger your cut some, but that's still going to add some bulk to your harness yep. itself. Soldering, I, as much as I hate to, as much as I hate to put a, put a, you know, put an a W up there for solder. I mean, it, soldering is much narrower. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's important, like you're really not adding much if any thickness to it. Yeah, to I mean if you yeah if you definitely have to do a lot of repairs or extend the wiring harness, you don't want to do all the you know joints in the exact same spot or you're gonna end up with a much thicker section of harness. You want to stagger them off, you know, if you can, you know, depending on how many you have. Because that way when you do bind them together in whatever loom you do, it doesn't end up being huge and not being able to be routed through through the vehicle properly. I'll think ahead when you're doing your connections, I mean I don't, I don't typically use electrical tape to cover any of my connections. I always use heat shrink tubing. Um, don't forget to put your heat shrink tubing on before you make your connection. 
uh, or you're gonna be cutting it out and redoing the connection. I cannot tell you how many times I have not had high ratio heat shrink and I have wasted a, a terminal because that I now have to snip off and yep. do again. Because and I, that's another reason why to leave that extra length. Protecting the wiring is super important. Yep. Um, you know, in a, in a mechanical sense, your grommets, that, your- that, that is actually a good point, the, you know, that we didn't talk about grommets. If you're running through any metal surface, always use a grommet. The number one cause of vehicle fires at some point, I remember reading, was stereo installs. Somebody had gone through a firewall with a wire, it wasn't grommeted, yep. and, and unfortunately, because that's so close to the battery, a lot of times people hadn't got, they hadn't had a fuse under hood, so there's no saving it. Like it's yep. you're just running hot right off the battery onto the onto the vehicle ground. It's just a, an uncontrolled short. Secure the wire. Yeah, you need to, you need to. Prov I mean, obviously your joints need to be electrically secure, but they you also need some mechanical security with your joints as well. That's that's pretty important, I think. Um, yeah, you know, when you're into it, it's it, you know it's hard to think of all the things ahead of time when you're when you're uh, talking about it. But yeah, when you're into it, you always have to uh, you know go down your checklist, make sure everything's secure, grommeted. How about uh, just wiring in the field? Like, what what do you what do you feel are like the uh, pitfalls of wiring in the field? Nick, I don't own a field. Huh? I don't own a field. <laughs> this guy's really funny. <laughs> he is really funny. Um, I'm thinking back to a time I repaired a uh, a Ford diesel tractor in a in a field, literally a field, not just like the field. I mean, like a field. Um, I didn't have a generator with me, so soldering wasn't even a possibility. This particular circuit controlled fuel delivery, so the tractor could not be moved, and I was miles from actual power. Like I don't have a seven mile extension cord right. in my truck. So, I mean, that, in that case there, you know, crimp really saved the day. Yeah, absolutely. Unless you had a butane soldering iron, which is nice for out in the field. I did not, but I do always, <laughs> I do always carry my trusty crimping tool and a couple of terminals in my toolbox. You know, space constraints. If you have to, even if you do want to do a solder joint, you know, you could be up under a dash. You don't have a lot of space to work it. Soldering iron in there and, and feed it or have any type of tooling to hold your wiring together. Um, it goes the same thing with a crimp, you know, it kind of it kind of stinks being up under a dash trying to get a crimp tool in there, hold the wires together and uh, do your crimp joint. So, you know, space, space constraints. That's one of my, my main pitfalls. Um, maybe I'll piggyback on that and talk about space constraints, not just for the tool, but for your body. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but like soldering takes me longer just because it takes a minute to heat up the joint, especially if you're doing several in, a, in the same area. You know, you better get comfy. You're going to yeah. be there for a second. It's comfy at the bench, but you know, again, when you're buried up under a dash trying to do something, or you're, yep. you know, you're in an engine bay, it might not, might not always be super comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, when you're doing wiring jobs, what do you prefer, product-wise? You know, tools or, or you know products themselves. You know, I don't love every single wiring product out there. You've, you've run into some junk, so have I, but Dorman, actually, when we brought out that builder series, um, I, the, the product manager who, who sort of kicked off that whole project, I think he faced a little opposition due to the fact these are more expensive items, but their quality is so good. Um, I, you know, a good set of crimpers, like this is the difference between crimps really working for you and really not. I, you know, I've seen some people who run into, you know, I say they hate crimped connections because they got something that looks like this and it's because instead of using a proper crimping tool, it's cranking out a pair of pliers or something. So the tools I think are really nice. And I'm, I'm not saying like there's, there's plenty of nice tools beyond dormant stuff for sure. You know, you have a set of ratcheting crimpers that are just lovely. The, the actual terminals themselves, though. That's what makes the Builder Series the best. Oh, man. The, these, so these are uninsulated. Nick actually pointed something out to me that I hadn't even noticed about these before. There is actually a nice sleeve around the outside of this thing to prevent sort of a collapsing crimp. It, it, it's like one more piece of insurance on this. You're going to get a nice even grab all the way around so you don't have like a lopsided crimp on one side or the other. These pre-cut sections of heat shrink are awesome. One of the things you asked me about that I didn't even know about until somebody turned me on to it was um, high ratio shrink, like heat shrink. Yep. So even if you have a big old chunk of it, it shrinks down enough and that stuff is awesome. Like, yeah, like a four to one. Yeah, what, what do you like? I know you've got some favorites in your arsenal too. Uh, I mean, non-insulated terminals like these builder series, those are all only way that I'll actually do any type of terminal work. I will never use insulated terminals um, for the reasons that you explained, you know, they just get bulky. And you can't actually make a proper crimp unless you have the right tool. I don't use split loom tubing. I try to use, you know, the uh, braided sheathing. It looks a lot better. 
And yeah, we're hucking products up here that our company sells for sure. But they, we also sell this stuff for a reason here. That builder series, again, that loom we have, sort of, you know, the braided stuff that's cuttable. Yep. Man, that stuff just looks the bee's knees. It looks way better than that weird, like, yellow split loom you get, you know, at the auto parts store that's yeah. like a little, little shaky yeah, <laughs> looks wise. Absolutely. Tooling wise, I like to use calibrated ratcheting crimp or crimpers. While we're on tooling, incidentally, you know, it, I, again, not a soldering guy, so we're, I, I don't want to shortchange those of you out there who solder, because I'm sure you have, there's some diehard solder folks. I will say one piece of equipment I don't like related to soldering, but there is a, a good counterpart, is this puppy. This thing's awesome for doing PCBs or tiny little work, but anything you're going to be doing automotive sense, you know, 14, 16, 18 gauge wire, this thing doesn't make enough juice. There's just not enough heat. Yeah, for sure. I also like uh, flush cut pliers, which obviously you can Use, I use them primarily for stripping, um, cutting zip ties flush. That's, that's what I'm are, looking for, is getting that nice clean zip tie cut. Yeah, Man, that looks exactly. Good. Those are pretty much my go-to tools uh, when, I, when I'm building a harness or, or making any type of repairs. I think that pretty much sums up our video. Oh, that'll do her. <laughs> yeah, and we'd like to hear from you. Definitely uh, drop it in the comments on Shop Press and let us know if there's something you agree or disagree with, and uh, maybe we'll talk about that next time. Totally. Thanks for checking out our video on crimping versus soldering. That's Nick. I'm Lem, and we're out of here.